and I want to bring on my next guest because I think if we're going to address any of the issues in the United States, we have to address education and the pop culture. We as conservatives have to address this. And if we do not, and I think to our detriment, we have abandoned we have abandoned education. We have abandoned the pop culture thinking that, well, you know what? What difference does it make, if I can borrow from, from Hillary Clinton? Well, it makes a heck of a lot of difference. When you give up on education, you end up getting occupiers of the Oval Office like Barack Obama. And that's been a disaster. June Campbell joining me now. She's the founder of something called Campbell Christian Academy. Now, she's been an educator for over four decades. Her students, pre-K through sixth grade, learn at an accelerated pace and are often two or, listen to this, two or three grade levels ahead of what their age indicates. June, welcome to the Voice of Texas down here in Houston. I know you're up in Dallas, right? I am. Good morning. How are you? Doing well. Thank you very much. I, I want you to articulate, as as the kids are now returning back to school, and a lot of conservative parents that are in this, that are in this audience really see what's going on in public education and they are worried not only because of the, the lack of academics, but as I've told stories on this program about how in California, how they have now mandated in their textbooks that the significance of Barack Obama's occupation of the Oval Office be taught. It's kind of creepy to me, uh, but th that has been a mandate out in California. Uh, it, it seems to be more or less about learning and more about indoctrination these days in the public education system. And what you guys are doing up in Dallas is truly revolutionary, and you're borrowing, if I can, if I can uh, steal a phrase, you're borrowing old school to do it. Tell us about the structure of, of Campbell Christian Academy. We are back to the basics, Chris. That's exactly what we are, old school. We're back to the things that worked then and work now, and uh, that is reading, writing, grammar, and math. Those are the basics, and if the, if the children have those tools in their toolboxes, they can do anything. But the public schools and the private schools, for that matter, today are all, they've done away with it, or they have gone to a system that doesn't work, for example, sight reading and uh, teaching math by all these uh, crazy ways that the teachers don't even know how to, how to do and the parents can't figure it out, and uh, much less the children. But we, we got, we've gone back to the basics. We teach reading by phonics, the old-fashioned way that works, and we teach math uh, where the children learn the math facts. They have to memorize the facts so that anything that they, any kind of a problem that comes along, they have those tools to uh, complete it and complete it correctly and complete the problem with ease. Now, folks are going to be astonished to learn what you have done up there at, at Campbell Christian Academy is that you have returned not only to the basic reading, writing, arithmetic model, but you have also returned to the single schoolhouse room. For, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, this is just think back to Little House on the Prairie, when the town had one schoolhouse and children from all grade levels learned in that same, in that same environment, and it has been a, a godsend as far as... as uh, having the younger kids being inspired and being even maybe even tutored by the older kids is that is that the dynamic you're seeing there, June? Well, the the younger students, the three year olds and four year olds and five year olds, for example, are all come to school at one time. The older children, the first through the sixth graders, come at another time. But it is a one room schoolhouse. It is a place where I can see what everyone's doing all the time. One of the beautiful parts is that uh, we have a lot of brothers and sisters who, who are there, and they love to be able to see one another. There's no reason to age segregate as far as putting them in a classroom here and a classroom there, but we do uh, group them according to their ability level and as close in age proximity as possible. But let me tell you one of the most important things that we do is that we teach children how to learn we teach them a process of learning. And I think we kind of teach the parents a little bit of a process of learning as well. <laughs> it's, it's, short, it's so out of the box, 
but we stick with reading, writing, grammar, and math. Can you, can you, can you just um, think of the impact of what you just said, June? It's out of the box to teach reading, writing, and math, it, because what education is, devo and I would say devolved into these days, is some social experiment about, uh, about social issues and self-esteem that have nothing, zero to do with learning uh, the, the, the types of skills and the type of information that was responsible back in the day for making America great. Exactly. Let, let me tell you a story you, you might find interesting. Um, I taught a lot of gymnasts, and they had a goal, and their goal was to get to the Olympics. And these girls worked out from 7 to 9 o'clock in the morning, and they came over to school, and we taught them their reading, writing, grammar, and math for a couple hours. And they'd go back to the gym, and they'd work out from till from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock at night. And a lot of people said, well, this, oh, this is a bad lifestyle. This is not a well-rounded life." And, and perhaps so. But one of them became a gold medal Olympian. The other ones all got college scholarships. Some of them were all American athletes. Now, if some well-meaning friend or neighbor had come along and said, oh, you know, just reading, writing, grammar, and math, that's not enough. Let's, let's introduce uh, some art and some science and some history and foreign language and all those things now so that they have a more well-rounded uh, curriculum. Well, what would have happened? they would have diluted the time that they needed to spend on the subject at hand. They would have uh, lost the focus, and that is the Olympics. Well, this is a picture of what we do. We believe that, that the schools, and us especially, we, we have to stick to our goal, and our goal is reading and math. You don't introduce all these other things until the time is right. They're all very important, but not until the time is right. You've got to get first things first because you can't do science if you can't read. You can't do science if you can't do math. Mm -hmm. Chemistry is algebra. And it's, on and building, on. it's building up that foundation these kids are going to need, and it's something that makes sense. It's sequential, and you, you folks are returning to it at, at Campbell Christian Academy, June Campbell. She is the founder of this, of, of this uh, well, it's, I like to say it's a new way of teaching, but it's really the old way of teaching mm -hmm. responsible for so much success, and the proof is in the pudding, folks. She and her system are kicking the collective behinds of public education, which shows you just how far public education really has fallen. June, if folks want more information about Campbell Christian Academy, where can they go? They can go to our website, CampbellChristianAcademy.com or our publications website, which is pure, P-U-R-E, dash publications.com. Well, you know what? I, I, I think that would be a wonderful addition to a schoolhouse just like this down here in Houston. June Campbell, thanks very much for your time here on The Voice of Texas. Thank you for having me. You betcha. It's The Voice of Texas, AM 700, KSCV.